Today we are talking about this, the DJI Mavic 3, and specifically the flight battery. In this video, we're going to give you guys a quick overview of its features and capabilities compared to previous smart batteries from DJI, and then we're going to talk about some specific subjects helping you to get the best possible lifespan. We're going to talk about the options with regards to charging, how to store the battery to get the best possible life, and then we're going to discuss whether you should use this battery multiple flights on the Mavic 3, because this is something that hasn't been recommended in the past, but it is something I see keep cropping up on forums because this drone now offers such a long flight time. Before we jump into that though, I just want to say a massive thank you to 3DXR in the UK. They have very kindly loaned me this Mavic 3 to allow me to make my review as well as content like this. If you are interested in getting yourselves one of these drones or anything for your Ardra Pilot, Pixhawk or any other kind of aircraft, please do check them out. They are a major dealer for things such as the Cube Autopilot and they stock everything you need to get your plane, boat or copter up and running. And again, a massive, massive thank you from me because we would not be able to make content like this without dealers like Ben's support allowing us to remain independent and tell you exactly what we think about a product rather than relying on the manufacturer. Anyway, that's enough of this. Let's get on with it and let's talk about the features and capabilities of the battery first of all. So, as is often the case with a DJI drone, when there's a new aircraft, there is a new battery, and the Mavic 3 is no different. This time, we have a new designed 4S 5000mAh smart battery that has many of the same features and capabilities that we've seen in the past. It has a built-in power circuit for monitoring the battery via the LEDs on the back, built-in charge and self-discharge capabilities as well. As I've mentioned, it is a 4S pack and it has a dedicated power connector just like DJI have used in the past. However, again, this isn't compatible with any other models. Turning on the battery is the same as it's been in past years, simply by double pressing on the back and single pressing will bring up the current charge level that the battery has inside. As I mentioned, these new batteries from DJI do have that built-in charge circuit, but the interesting change this time is these batteries can now be charged from USB-C. And whilst you can't do that directly on the pack itself, you can charge them via USB-C in the aircraft or via the accessory hub that DJI have released with the Mavic 3. This hub allows you to sequentially charge the batteries from the fullest down to the least charge with the supplied adapter, but it is also USB-C power delivery capable and it will allow you to use other adapters as well. Included with the Mavic 3 is an all new 65 watt power adapter. This has a USB-A output port as well as a hardwired USB-C. The USB-C is designed to charge the DJI battery either in the drone itself or via the accessory hub and the USB-A port is used to charge the remote controller or any other accessories you may have. One important thing to note is to charge the batteries on the drone, you need to use the hardwired USB-C cable and not the USB-A port because while both will charge the battery, it is the USB-C hardwired cable that has that 65 watt output and will charge the battery in about an hour and a half. Just like with previous models, the DJI Hub, which is available with the Fly More or Cine Pack, allows you to charge the batteries sequentially. It doesn't charge them all at the same time. It will start with the battery with the most charge, working its way back to the battery with the least. We are starting to see some third-party chargers become available on the market as well, which will allow you to charge up to four batteries at the same time. These don't have the full 65 watt of output like the DJI charger, but they will still charge four batteries quicker than using the hub for instance. What is nice about charging the Mavic 3 is that you have multiple options available. Because it has a USB-C input you can either use the original DJI adapter that supports power delivery and PPS or you can use a third-party adapter that supports the power delivery protocol up to 20 volts max. The DJI official adapter doesn't charge via the power delivery protocol as standard and it uses the PPS protocol which is very similar to how the DJI batteries used to charge in the past, delivering just the right amount of voltage to charge the battery as it comes up. 
The main difference between PPS and power delivery is power delivery has preset stages of voltage outputs. So for instance, it will stagger the output depending on what the device requires, but it doesn't have the ability to individually set the voltage just like the PPS protocol does. The easiest way to understand this is the PPS protocol is basically the same as how DJI batteries were charged in the past, like a standard power adapter in constant current mode and power Power delivery simply supplies 20 volts and then the battery handles the rest itself. What we don't know at this time is how DJI actually handle this increased voltage via power delivery. They do though state that it is compatible and there's no reason to think that charging at 20 volts would cause any issues with the drones or batteries at this time. Moving over to self-discharge, as I mentioned, these batteries do have that feature built in, but it is slightly different to some of the previous models. For instance, if you leave a DJI battery on the Mavic 3 fully charged for three days, it'll self-discharge itself down to 96% capacity. The idea of this is to take the battery from being fully charged just down to 96 to help prevent swelling when the battery is left standing. Then, if you leave the battery an additional nine days, it will self-discharge itself down to 60%. Whilst we don't know for sure, the chances are single pressing the button, just like on previous models, will reset that counter, and that would be a way to allow you to keep the battery fully charged if you didn't want the self-discharge timer to kick in. Personally, I actually think this 12 days discharge cycle is too long and my personal recommendation is not leaving these batteries fully charged any longer than three days. If you know you're going to fly them on day three or four, okay, but if you're not sure when you're going to fly, I would personally recommend discharging the batteries down to around 60% manually rather than waiting for that self-discharge feature to kick in. For me, the self-discharge feature is more of a fail-safe backup than something I rely on on a daily basis, and I have always got the most life out of my batteries by managing the self-discharge myself rather than allowing the batteries to do it itself. We have seen batteries on previous models like the Mavic 2 swell, and with the price of the batteries on the Mavic 3, I would rather be recommending people to manage that self-discharge and use that feature as a backup should you forget or something get in the way. Now to talk about some best practices for these batteries. Well, I've done some of that already. For instance, with regards to charging, you can use the DJI or a third party adapter. My personal recommendation is to try and always charge with the DJI adapter as much as you possibly can because it is using this PPS charging mode that brings the voltage up slowly rather than slamming the packs with 20 volts. We don't know what the lifespan of the batteries will be charging them via a power delivery adapter. There is still very little information out there on how the battery deals with this internally. For instance, we know these batteries are wired differently to previous smart batteries on DJI because they are also able to be charged via 5 volt USB as well, although it will take a very long time. We know when the battery is charging with the DJI adapter, it is charging via the main pack voltage because it is getting around that 15, 16, 17 volts as the battery capacity is coming up. However, it is clearly switching to being able to charge the cells individually when you plug them in via 5 volt too. What we don't fully understand is how it deals with 20 volt via power delivery, although to be clear, DJI do state on the hub that it is fully supported, so there's no reason to think it will give problems, but personally, I would recommend charging via the DJI adapter where you can, making sure that you are using that hardwired USB-C connector. With regards to self-discharge, we've already covered most of that already. As I've said, it does have the feature built in, but I personally don't recommend you rely on it. And I would personally always try to manage the batteries yourself to get the best possible life. Storing them should always be at roughly room temperature and you wanna get them about 60 to 65% capacity or just as the third LED is flashing on the back of the battery if you're watching it charge. 
I also, as I've said, don't recommend you leave them that maximum of 12 days and manage that self-discharge yourself. That way you will get the best possible lifespan from the batteries and you will reduce any risk of swelling like we've seen on previous models. The last thing I want to talk about on the Mavic 3 battery situation is regards to multiple flights because there has been a lot of talk on this online whether you are able to fly your DJI Smart Battery on the Mavic 3 multiple times and this is really being driven simply by the amount of flight time these batteries are capable of delivering. Nothing has changed with regards to the overall behaviour of these batteries and my personal recommendation remains the same that you should only ever fly a fully charged DJI smart battery and once you've landed you should not fly that battery again. I will throw in the odd caveat to that and that is if you land for a few moments and take off again that should be absolutely fine but for me the real red line is once you have left the battery land and cool down the battery's capacity isn't always accurate and that is the point where you should not fly that battery again until it's fully charged. There is always a risk flying a partly charged battery and if you've been doing this as long as I have you've probably seen reports online yourself of varying aircraft being lost most of the time due to people not fully understanding how the LiPo works and having a sudden change in state of charge resulting in them losing their aircraft. DJI do still state that you should only ever fly with a fully charged battery and my opinion on that hasn't changed and whilst this battery does offer much better flight time than we've seen in the past that is sort of leading you into potential danger should you try using it two or three times. I'm not saying the second you do this you will get a failure but best practice is that you should only ever fly a freshly fully charged battery on your drone. With regards to flying these batteries if they've been left two or three days, remember after three days it will drop itself down to 96% capacity. If your batteries have done that I would recommend topping them off before flight. I have personally flown these on 96% having done a few tests and I've not seen any specific issues but again the same rule applies that you should only fly a freshly fully charged battery and once the battery has been allowed to cool or rested at least say 20 minutes you should not fly it again until it's been fully recharged. Now I understand people may not agree with this policy and with the additional flight time these batteries offer that may offer some restrictions. The advice I'm giving you is based on spending many many years with varying aircraft and varying batteries from DJI and it always comes down to the same thing that when there are issues it tends to be around the flight battery capacity or compass calibration and those are still today the two biggest risks whenever you are flying a drone. Finally, before we wrap this one up, I just want to talk quickly about charging the smart controller or the remote. As I've said on the DJI adapter, there is two outputs. You have the hardwired power delivery PPS output and you have the standard 5 volt 2 amp output. Personally, I recommend you charge the remote via the normal output as much as possible. And whilst you can fast charge it via power delivery, I would recommend the slower output just to give you the best possible lifespan from the internal battery. It does support it because it would not allow it to enter power delivery mode if it didn't. But again, the slower you can charge your batteries, the better and the more lifespan you will get from them. And what I would say is try to charge it from the slower output more often than not, unless you need to fast charge it and do it that way. Now that is it from me on this one. If you have found this video useful, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. I will be putting up my own personal review on the Mavic 3 in the next week 10 days if you're watching this now or if you're watching this in the future that should already be live and please do check that out as well. As I mentioned at the start I want to say a massive massive thank you to Ben at 3DXR. We would not have been able to make today's video or the reviews on the Mavic 3 without his support. He's a fantastic dealer that supplies everything from the Mavic 3 right through to the Cube Autopilot. Please do check them out. There is a link 
to them in the description. And again, just a massive thank you from me for supporting the channel to allow us to keep making content like this. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Please do hit the subscribe button if you want to support the channel. There are links to our Patreon as well as Buy Me A Coffee too. If you want to allow us to keep making independent content and maybe even buy ourselves a Mavic 3, please do check them out. Also, there's a link to my Discord server in the description of this video too.